evening and welcome to Community Conversations. My name is Sean Doherty. I'm uh, the Y guy here in town and I'd like to uh, also introduce... My name's Chris Bishop. I'm a varsity assistant coach at Xavier High School and uh, president of uh, Wallingford Cardinals Baseball here in town. So, nice to be here. Nice to be here as well. Um, so we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, coaching uh, yep. and our experiences and whatnot. Um, so why, why don't I kind of turn it over to you first as far as what uh, what do you do as far as your coaching and uh, sports? Well, and I've been uh, involved in youth sports in this town for the better part of the past 10 years. I've been on the Wallingford Little League board. I was an assistant coach at Sheehan High School for the past couple of years, and this year is my first year at Xavier. Luckily enough to run the travel program in town for our boys that want a little bit more competitive than rec baseball. We've been doing that for seven years now. Pretty actively involved in it. It's seven days a week for the most part. So. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was a coach for um, my two sons. I have yep. a 16-year-old now and a 13-year-old. And they both went through baseball, coached them when they were younger and that kind of thing. So I had fun as well. Um, so what, what's your passion as far as coaching? I just love teaching. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it, it's something I don't think I could do. I give teachers a lot of credit because I couldn't do it for six hours a day. But two hours on an athletic field, I can do that any day of the week. I love being around kids, showing kids. And, you know, my passion is, is I've had kids that have gone on and graduated high school. I've been invited to high school graduations. I've, you know, gotten nice. letters from kids after they go to college saying, you know, Coach, it's funny, some of the things we do here at college now is stuff you did with us when we were 12. And, you know, that's kind of the fun part of it is seeing kids as they grow up and, you know, seeing them as they get older. And uh, it's really, really a fun thing to do. Nice, nice. I love coaching. The thing is I may not know everything or yeah. not be the best at that particular sport, but it's all about youth development. That's it. Um, it's about kids learning Absolutely. and getting better and also making friends Absolutely. and having fun. And that's the, that's the key. And, um, you know, if we got a shout out to parents, you know, we want to, that's the number yeah. one focus point is having fun. Well, that's the most important thing. And it's, uh, in, we're in a day and age where everyone's trying to specialize and uh, everyone yeah. thinks that you have to yep. be a baseball player at nine years old. And that's all you do is baseball. And, and, and that's not necessarily true. You look at most professional athletes and most of them were three port, sports stars in high school. Um, so it really is, it's about, you gotta have fun. The kids gotta enjoy it. If they don't enjoy it, they're not gonna stick around with it. So you, you okay. gotta kind of bring that into it and hope that the kids can realize that and the parents can realize that. And you don't need to go specialize in stuff, you know. You have travel baseball coaches, travel soccer coaches, basketball, whatever the sport may be, all telling them, oh, you gotta focus on this. Yep. You don't have to, you gotta be a well-balanced athlete and you have to enjoy what you do. Because if you don't at the end of the day, you're not gonna wanna do it later on in life. Correct, yep. Burnout, uh, injuries Absolutely. occur, yep. that kind of thing. And also where the kids are starting to not like the sport that they're absolutely they're playing in and, and we so. see it unfortunately far too often i mean I, I have all sorts of horror stories of parents that'll ride their kids after they're done with their game at nine years old because they booted two ground balls and it's like you're nine years old you're gonna make errors yeah. and as, as a parent sometimes i think that's the toughest thing for them to realize you want your kid to succeed but you also can't ride them too hard either um, yeah coaches give them enough credit and uh the parents have to kind of back off sometimes and that's hard to realize as a parent Correct. You know, yeah. I understand that. I was lucky enough to play for my father growing up. My yep. father coached me, and uh, there was no one harder than him. <laughs> nice, nice. And um, you look back at it, and you realize how lucky you were, obviously, to have parent involvement. But there's sometimes just there, and you say, you know what? Um, it, sometimes it's nice to not get yelled at on the way home. Yeah. And, yep. and that's yeah. for every kid. So they got to be able to enjoy that car ride home sometimes, too. So. Right. And what, what do you feel about um, coaching interaction with uh, parents and whatnot? Um, because some parents could get really passionate hmm. about uh, their their sons and daughters in regards to the sports, and they want the best for them Absolutely. and that kind of thing. But um, there's a, there is that separation that needs to occur. Well, the toughest thing is is parents got to also remember that coaches are volunteers. Even the yeah. guys that get yep. paid for it, the high school coaches, you know, the travel coaches, quote unquote, the guys that get paid for it, they're they're not it's getting paid. It's a statement. Yeah. It's it's to help cover gas. That's really all it covers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a high school coach, and you, you may make three thousand dollars for your three months, but you're there two and a half hours, three hours, every single day. Yeah. You break that yep. down, you might be making two bucks an hour. Yeah. I mean, yep. so they're, they're really, they're volunteers. They do this because they love it, and we love the kids, and that's why we do what we do. So I think the parents got to kind of take a step back and, and think of that side of it as well. And parents also, you know, sometimes they kind of want to yell from the stands. Yeah. And, and, and that's a tough thing to do because the kid's got enough pressure on himself. Oh, yeah. But also as coaches, sometimes we tend to forget – about the parents because we're kind of like well you know the parents got to keep their mouths shut they got to let little Johnny go with this but their parents they love their kids that's Correct. why they're there just cheering them on watching the game and they love their kids and they want what's best for them so it's a tough balance it is trying it is. trying to figure that out. I think that's one of the most challenging things as a coach is, is the balance between with the parents and the kids and all that yeah so and also to teach uh, from a communication standpoint that um, teaching the the player mm-hmm 
the child, that kind of thing, to have that communication with the coach. Yep. Um, and more so than the parent and the coach. You want mm -hmm. to uh, more so have that communication and have that uh, child then relay the information back to the parent. If the parent asks any yep. questions, concerns. Of course, you know, there's a point where if it's younger, yeah. that kind of thing, or also if at any extreme, but really the communications t should take place um, from the, the, the student or the player and the coach. And this is all about youth development. Absolutely. That kind of and that's part of the development is we're not just developing athletes, we're developing young men and women. So yeah. you want to teach them early on how to be able to communicate with people. Whether you're happy or not, you have to be able to communicate. And um, I know we start, at least in the Cardinal program, at nine years old, we tell these kids, nine and ten years old, it's your job to talk to the coach. If you have a question, right. you have a problem, you go talk to the coach. Yeah. And uh, the good thing is, is for the most part, the parents understand that and they see that. And, th and that's really, really good to see that parents can understand where we're coming from from that aspect. So Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, um, sports-wise, yep. um, uh, you were a player growing up? Yep, that played baseball, thing? wrestled in high school, played travel basketball. So I kind of... Oh, nice. Only thing I didn't do was football. It's my biggest regret. Yeah. So. <laughs> and what do you coach now? Uh, just baseball at this point. I used to coach uh, middle school wrestling in Meriden for a couple of years, but unfortunately nice. life gets in the way sometimes. So I, sure. um, but it's all baseball. Like I said, uh, we have in the Cardinal program, we have kids nine all the way up through the Legion program at 19 years old. And then nice. uh, the high school at Xavier, obviously. So I kind of see all the ages, which is, it's a lot of fun, you know, interacting yeah. with kids at different ages, seeing how they kind of grow through the years. It's, it's fun. Yeah. What's your favorite age group to coach? <sighs> I would have to say it's probably the 12 or the 13 year old age. Yeah. You know, high school kids are kind of developed enough where you're, yep. you're just kind of pointing them in the right direction at that point. The, the 12, 13-year-old age are really more involved with the development of the player. And that's just a lot of fun to see kids, yeah. from, you know, even a big difference in kids at that age from three months ago. It, it's huge oh, yeah. to see yeah. the, the difference in those kids. And that, that's what makes it fun. I know we, uh, at least in the Cardinal program, we do a trip every year with our 12-year-olds at the end of the summer where we go somewhere. The past couple of years, it's been to nice. Cooperstown for a tournament. This year, we're going to Myrtle Beach. And that's kind of a, a fun thing for us as coaches because we get to see kids for a week straight with, yep. you know, we all stay together as a team. It's a, it's a fun experience to see how these kids yeah. re react with each other off the baseball field, too. So. Right. And that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, um, you know, that... That one percentile, or probably even less than that one percentile, is going to go on to play yeah. college and, and absolutely and professional sports, that yep. kind of thing. So, ninety-nine percent of those uh, are going to move past sports, absolutely. or at least maybe hopefully keep sports in their mm -hmm. in their lives one way, yeah. shape, or form. Because it is, uh, uh, it's all about physical activity. It's keeping them yep. healthy, absolutely. Um, but uh, they also have to keep in mind that uh, the balance. Well, one of my favorite stats, we um, as coaches, we never have enough knowledge of what we're doing so we every year as coaches we go to the, there's a baseball convention world Co coaches convention mohegan sun every year and we go over here and one nice. of the fun facts that i heard a coach state one time is he said you know if you pick any day in a calendar year there's yeah. 25 baseball players born that day so then you expand that to that week and then that month and you think uh -huh. about all the kids that are playing baseball that are that same age and across the country yeah. So yep. the one percent, you're you're really talking about minuscule numbers that yeah. make it to that professional or that high college level, right. and that's part of our development is we got to teach kids that you know we, we want you to have goals, yep. but it also may not be realistic for you, and that's okay too. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's kind of part of the development that we're doing as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I coached. Uh, so my kids were young. I uh, want to give them the opportunity yep. to do whatever they like That's to do, it. that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, so there was soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, there was swimming. There was um, uh, baseball, mm -hmm. basketball. And uh, um, basketball probably was more close and dear to my heart. Yep. As I, would play, I played for Lyman Hall. Um, then I went on and played a little college. But um, So I coached probably eight to nine years between uh, mm -hmm. the kids starting off in a little bitty yep. basketball, that kind of thing, uh, and all through. Uh, but just the changes at the younger age, you know, I yeah. really liked the, the younger age, almost a kind of the elementary school before yeah. they got it to middle school. But as far as the changes that they yeah. they made from uh, the start the start of the season to the end, and you're you're only talking what twelve weeks, yeah. that kind of thing. Yep. Um, but um, that was those those are fun times. Those are fun times, yep. making a difference in the in the kids' life because uh, uh, as coaches, we're role mo role models. Absolutely. You know? They've got their parents, they've got their teachers, and they have coaching. And uh, um, I think. That's a big impact in part of their lives. It is because, I mean, you think about all the time they spend. They spend, obviously, a tremendous amount of time at school and a tremendous amount of time at home. But outside of that, their next biggest influence is going to be their athletic coaches. Yeah. So we kind of have a job in our own to make sure we're good influences in, in, in that sense, that we are teaching them the, the right and the wrong and all that stuff. Because, you know, 
nowadays these kids that grow up, what you see on TV, what you see in the movies, what you hear oh, on yeah. music, you know, there's too many bad influences for these kids out there. So it's even more important for us now as coaches to really promote the good side of human nature. Yeah. So, any uh, funny stories that you could think of as far as uh, from your coaching days? Well, I mean, I, I have one even from last year. We went to Cooperstown yeah. last year with our 12s, and um, the big thing in baseball now is all these guys doing the bat flips. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, as an old school baseball guy, I'm completely against it. Oh, yeah. Yep. We One of our boys, one of our 12 year olds, was lucky enough to hit a moonshot home run. Yep. And as he's rounding third base, I give him a high five. I say, nice hit. And he goes, Coach, you see my bat flip? It was kind of <laughs> one of those moments where, like, ah, oh, yep. these kids nowadays. But it was, just, it was funny because he gets back to the dugout, and all, all everyone's talking about is his bat flip. And I didn't see it because I watched the ball. But it was sure. just, it's one of those funny moments where the kids just make you laugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's, you know, one of the main reasons we do what we do is, you know, to be yeah. th- for those enjoyable moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basketball, baseball a little bit, but also uh, soccer. The younger age, yep. uh, the five-year-olds, the yep. four-year-olds, that kind of thing. Uh, just coaching those folks, um, stressful. Uh, Very much so, more you, so than the older ones. Oh yeah, yeah, because you're you're just got to get the basics across. Yeah. You know, if you can make it through that, like forty-five minutes of corralling and whatnot exactly. and, yep. and making sure that uh, nobody hurts themselves That's and all it. that kind yep. of stuff. Running with the ball and, and that kind of thing and um, you know, making those piles of sand on second base yep. and everything. Yep, seen that plenty of times. Yeah, but it's all part of life. Yep. And, and um, it's that, you know, that's what coaching is all about. Because uh, at the end of the day, they're looking up to you. you know, yeah, and, that's really and, and they're enjoying themselves. And, and that's really the most important thing. Any horror stories? Parents or players? It could be either one. Oh, man. Um, one. There's a lot of those. Um, you know, the toughest thing is, is, is it, dealing with parents is they, they just get over the top sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't want to put down parents in any way, shape or form because I'm not one yet. I don't have any kids of my own. I'm lucky enough to have 120 kids every year. I get to call nice. my own. So, nice. um, but sometimes the parents, man, I mean, it, it's not really any one specific horror story, but you just sit there and you say, man, the, these parents sometimes with the damage that they could potentially be doing to their kid long term because of decisions they're making to yell at a coach about playing time or yeah. to, you know, belittle a coach or belittle other kids. I mean, I've heard parents yelling at other kids from the stands, kids that aren't their own, yeah. you know, saying, oh, you got to make this play. And it's like this is a 10, 11, 12-year-old kid who's already down on himself because he didn't make the play and let his team down. Yeah, yeah. And he knows his coach is already going to yell at him when he gets in the dugout for not doing something right, and then he's got to hear it from other parents in the stands. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of the, the toughest thing to deal with as a coach is, you know, it's one thing for a parent to be with, on his own kid, but at that point you're talking about someone else's child. You know, you may have potential issues with the parent of that child in the stands. So right, right. That, that's one of the tougher challenges to deal with is, is – the stands part of it with the parents yeah you know parents you, you go talk to them one-on-one after the game they're always they're always pleasant even if they have an issue they're, they're yeah. for the most part pl- pleasant to deal with but sometimes in the, the mid game the heat of the moment yeah there's that competitive yeah nature that competitive whatnot, nature sometimes comes out gets all little, of us so yeah. yeah gets a little ugly and comes out absolutely kind of um uh, what was i say um High school as well. Yep. Uh, you see that in high school sports, and absolutely, um, it could get ugly. Um, well, the toughest thing about high school sports is it's tough to find quality coaches at any level in high yeah. school because of the schedule. I mean, who can realistically leave their job at one thirty, yeah. two o'clock yeah. every day? So it's tough to find someone. So if you're lucky enough to have someone who's a good coach, then you you really need to cherish that experience. I mean, you look at North Haven, who's had the same coach for it seems like the past hundred years, <laughs> and he's done a great job there. Yeah. And it's very rare to find that. Even Matt Altieri here in Sheehan. Um, yeah. it, it's tough to find someone, Chuck Burkhardt at Lyman Hall, who can yeah. stick around for a long time because it's so tough on your schedule. So, you know, even if you don't agree with them all the time, at least appreciate the fact that they are trying to be there and do what they think is best for the kids. You're not always going to agree with every lineup move that we as high school coaches make, and that's okay too because sure. we're human. We're going to make mistakes. There's a reason why we're not Joe Girardi managing the Yankees. <laughs> you know, it's easy to second guess everyone. Yeah. after the fact but we just kind of look at it and we take it day by day with what we have for the best knowledge available to us which we see these kids every day day in yeah. day out of practice on the game field and parents don't see that all the time so just you know it's tough but they got to kind of trust our judgment sometimes too right. Right. and it's tough because they may see you know their little johnny may have gone three for four the last game but then they didn't see a practice he was horsing around and then they complain that he's not playing the next day well yeah that there's that part of it too so yeah. That, that, that's, I think, one of the tougher things for high school coaches to deal with is, you know, the, the schedule's tough enough, and then you have the parents who always think that they, they know what's yeah. best for the team. Playing time. Playing and, time, yeah. and who yeah. should be the starting pitcher or starting shortstop. And it's tough. It's, you know, we, we hear those, too. I mean, yeah. as coaches, we always, it always gets back to us who's complaining, who thinks we, what we should be doing. And, 
you know, I know as a coach, we'd never hold that against a kid, but it's tough sometimes to hear those things and say, you know, we're trying to do what's best for the team and not everyone's going to like that. Yeah. yeah. How about, um, what are your thoughts on uh, future going forward? Any concerns with sports and kids don't do enough outside. We have, um, so ran phone training systems is out of Hamden, Connecticut and our, uh, our boys all go there during the fall for conditioning workouts with them. Yeah. Um, they do a, a team training program with our kids, and our one of our trainers for the team came up to me and goes, you know, it's funny, Chris. He goes, if these kids were outside like we were growing up 15, yeah. 20 years ago every day, the stuff we're showing them, I wouldn't have a job. Yeah. And it's true because yeah. these kids nowadays, they have so much access to cell phones, computers, and video games and all that that they're just not doing enough athletic things. You see kids that they just don't know how to really run properly, and I, I never ran properly. I'm not going to be one to say I was the fastest guy in the world, but how many kids don't even know how to really go out there and run because they've never played in the backyard? Yeah, They're yeah. used to structured environments. That's my biggest fear as a coach is these kids don't know how to do something unstructured. Yeah. They know you get dropped off a baseball practice, your coach tells you what to do for tower, two hours, and you go home. Yeah. So there's no backyard wiffle ball leagues anymore, tournaments where these yeah. kids just go yell yeah. at each other and figure out what the strike zone is and argue back and forth about who was safe and who was out and how to deal with those life situations. Yeah. Because realistically, at the end of the day, is safe and out in a backyard wiffle ball game important? No. But it teaches them how to handle real-life situations in a non-structured environment, and that's my biggest fear as a coach is these kids. Yeah, they just don't get that nowadays. I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, and as a big wiffle ball guy myself yeah. growing up Absolutely. and that kind of thing. You're all, you're outside. You're outside after dark. Yep, that yep. kind of thing. And you're playing, and um, and you're active. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not handheld devices. No. It's not uh, screen time. It's it's your. You wanted to go thing. find your friends. You you didn't yeah. make a phone call. You went and found where all the bikes were in the parking lot yeah. or in the neighborhood, I should say. And then, um, you know, it's wiffle ball all summer. It's basketball during the fall. It's f football in the winter in the snow in someone's front yard. I mean, it was always something. Yeah. There was no specialization. There was no. Oh, we got to go home. It's you know. It's too cold outside. It was yeah. you got kicked out of the house during yeah. vacation, and you found something to do. If it was ten below, you went and played football and tackled each other, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how you stayed warm. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's a much different time nowadays, and I think that's one of our toughest challenges as coaches is getting kids to to be yeah. interactive in that sense. Yeah, because I don't know if it's a safety issue or concerns or anything of that nature, but it's also the health and handheld devices. So yeah. So if there's tips to parents, that kind of thing out there, it's definitely. Keep your kids active. Absolutely. Um, give them that independence yep. to a point, but uh, you know, keep them active. It's tough with the world that we live in. I mean, there's always those safety concerns, and you know, unfortunately, the world we live in, you don't know who, who lives next door anymore, and it, right, it's scary. Right. But at the same time, you know, find someone who, you know, during the summer months, you, you know, you kind of have your cliques of who plays baseball or football together. Everyone picks someone's house to drop the kids off that day so they can get, go hang out outside and do something a little unstructured. Yeah. You know, don't let them sit at home and play on the computer all day and talk to each other on the phone. Yeah. Go drop them off somewhere. I mean, there's always, lucky enough where most parents, someone's home during the summer. And if they're not, you can find someone at a friend's house that is home that you can drop your kid off. Don't, you know, don't go drop them off at a babysitter where they're by themselves all day. See if you can find someone that is yeah. in their friend group that you can drop them off and let them interact all the time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my biggest tip for parents is just... Get the kids out of the house as much as humanly possible. Let them out of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, good, good recommendations, yeah. especially especially the social aspect of yep. things. Um, a lot of times we say you, you could see at uh, dinner theaters, you yes. know, where they're uh, you got a couple with two uh, cell phones. Yep. You know, you, know, you got to put them put them down, start yeah. talking to each other. Absolutely. And that's what the fear is going forward as far as uh, the socialization with mm -hmm. the kids. It all kind of rolls back into sporting. Uh, you yeah. know, as far as a team effort um you're not going to find that in team sports yep and um that's where if we can continue you know promoting sports yeah um at any ability at any age you know get the kids out there get them active Absolutely. and that kind of thing and um you know promote that from a parent perspective you certainly don't have to be a superstar athlete to to excel in sports yeah. um it, it's all about your mindset is how what you want to do yeah. I and mean, you can enjoy the game and be marginal at it. You don't have to be a superstar. And really, you can still enjoy the game. There's rec leagues for every sport you can imagine now. Yeah. You don't need to play this travel, this travel, that to, to consider yourself a good athlete. Yeah, I agree. You know, if you like baseball, but you're not a good baseball player, maybe football is your sport, then play rec baseball. Play yeah. with your friends. Enjoy the experience. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's just really, really tough for some of these kids to – to get past that social aspect of it because a lot of them don't know how to interact with each other because they're just not getting enough of it. Yeah. Now, um, how do you feel about uh, the 
infamous kind of trophy um, to all yep. <laughs> all concerned, that kind of thing. Hey, you know what? I participate. Uh, the participation to trophy. I mean, my generation, we got a lot of participation trophies yeah, too. Yep. Um, Same here. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not to say that the partition, participation trophy is evil, but make sure that there are there is something else for them to achieve. Yeah. You know, it's okay for little Johnny who's playing Little League Baseball to go get his participation trophy at 10 years old, but make sure that there's something else for those kids to strive for. Right. Don't just let them settle for participating. Yeah. I think that's the biggest difference we see nowadays is everyone wants to kill the trophy, quote unquote, yeah. but it's not the trophy, it's that we're not setting the bar high enough for these kids. Yeah. We as coaches and as parents should just set the bar higher for them and say, you know what, that's great that you had fun this year, but you know what, next year let's really strive to be better at hitting or strive to do this. Yeah. Give them a goal to reach other than just getting a trophy at the end of the year. Because like I said, even if you're not a great athlete, these are life lessons you're trying to teach. Yeah. Eventually we all get jobs. We all have to deal with a team environment and the workforce. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can't handle a team environment in a rec baseball, softball, football setting, how are you going to handle real life when you have a boss down your throat and you have to get a group project done as a team in the workforce? It just, it's not easy to do that. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. One thing, uh, one alternative that I want to, you know, a little shout out to the park and rec um, for basketball, there, the Weber League. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, trophies this year, they handed out basketballs. You know, kind of encouraging yeah. the kids to just go out there and play. So kudos to John Gall and his team. Which is an awesome, awesome idea. And I, and I hear the high school division this year had a uh, all-star game, which I think was uh, nice. quite, quite an nice. awesome thing put on by – the kids actually put that together. So oh, I'll nice. give a shout-out to Blake Batiste. I know he was one of the ones oh, that nice. ran that. Nice. So I guess they enjoyed that. So, But th that's what it's about. It's rec basketball, but they found a way to take it that next step, yep. which is even better. So yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us tonight. Um, this is – Again, Chris Bishop, uh, Xavier assistant coach, Wallingford Cardinals president. And also, if you have any questions, by all means, I'm always available to reach out to. You can email me at cbishop at wallingfordbaseball.com. Always love talking about youth sports, so by all means, reach out to me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about any sport, not just baseball, you know, I'm always willing to help out the kids of this next generation in whatever sport it may be. So thanks for having me. Very good. So. Thank you. And uh, my name is Sean Dory. I'm the Y guy here in town, um, coach as well. And uh, we got a lot of things going on at the YMCA in regards to youth, de youth development activities and uh, sport, youth sports and teen activities. So uh, thank you again.